Welcome to AdvisorCon Academy Training. AdvisorCon is a group of authors, teachers, consultants, and technologists who are passionate about helping organizations maximize productivity by leveraging the Microsoft technology experience. We have over 25 years of expertise helping teams build efficiency utilizing great project management methodology. So stay tuned for some dynamic training. Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about the Project Manager's Guide to Microsoft Forms. And so we're gonna be spending time today with Microsoft Survey and Poll Tool. Um, a little bit about myself before we get started. My name is David Bentz. I am one of our project advisors here at Advisacon. Um, I have a background in engineering and audio production as well as project management uh, for a little while now. I'm a certified project management professional with PMI's Project Management Institute, as well as being certified in Microsoft Project and other Microsoft tools. Um, and I am the project management office lead here at Advisacon, and I love talking about tools and technology. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So today, we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about what Microsoft Forms is as a tool and it's part of the Office 365 suite. And we're gonna spend most of our time just in a demo of how to possibly use the tool, especially in various scenarios and how to integrate it with Microsoft Teams, how to look at some of the analytics that's available within Forms, as well as kind of a brief look at some of the possibilities that are now becoming available in Microsoft's new Forms Pro tool. What is Forms? Uh, at its heart, Farms is just a tool for collecting responses. Uh, so you can create surveys, polls, quizzes. Um, there's built-in response analytics uh, that can be extended using Power BI Pro uh, and in the Pro version of Forms, uh, which Microsoft released at the tail end of last year in 2019. So one of the things that people often look at is, you know, if we're trying to talk about, you know, collecting responses and information, we have a lot of different tools that are available to us right now, but sometimes, you know, maybe we want to get consensus on something. And I think that's one of the ideas of, you know, if we're looking at, you know, polling our people within a project team uh, or within, you know, a, a different organization, if you're looking to kind of get information or even just kind of maybe some, you know, post project survey. So we're going to take a look at, you know, how to create a quick poll and then also we're going to kind of look at a couple of options for uh, basically some kind of a customer satisfaction survey, maybe something that you might use at a project closeout or a gate review, something along those lines. So with that, we're going to jump right on in to Microsoft Forms. So let's kick out of here and we will go over. So the starting place for Forms we log into our Office 365 environment. So we've logged into Office 365. And you can see here, I have forms listed in the list of apps there, but if you don't see it in your list of apps here, you click the all apps button here, which will expand the list of all the apps available to you. And we'll just go ahead and go to forms, which will open up forms in another window here. And you can see, I have a number of forms that I've gotten here, created in here, a couple of demos, a couple of little things that we've thrown together. Um, if you have forms that are shared with you, somebody else in your organization built the form and shared it, you'll be able to see that here. As well as if you have forms that are created as part of a group. As you can see, this is a very simple interface. You have two options here on the main form page, new form and new quiz. So if we look at the new form button, we'll just go ahead and click that. <clears throat> We get a very simple page here, which will let you see the questions. And then this is also, you'll manage a form in progress. You can see any responses that have been submitted here, which will give you kind of that, that instant analytics piece. But basically we can set up in here, we can just call this our webinar poll. And what you can put in a description if you like, we have the option here of, if you click the little insert image, we can either pull in an image search here, although use caution, obviously you're responsible for respecting uh, copyrights. Uh, or if you look at your OneDrive, we can see different pieces here and you might be able to pull images from somewhere else if you wanted to throw in photos. There's also a theme selection here. So we can see there's this light and this theme ideas gives some suggested sample themes based on either your title or some kind of any other information that's put in here. But then there's also kind of the standard colors. If we want to just do a plain color background, uh, maybe we want to do, let's just do purple. That's a fun color. Um, and now we just, we want to start adding content to our form. 
And you can see here, there's only a handful. We've got a handful of options that are here recommended for folks if you're you know, putting in this recommendation of like maybe some standard information that you wanna collect. So, hey, if I just wanna go ahead and add all this stuff in here, I can say, sure, let's go ahead and add all this in here. And so now we've created a series of fields that will collect information relative to these other pieces. But now we've added these pieces in here. Maybe I don't, this questions or comments thing, ah, that's kind of a little bit excess. That's, we're gonna drill into that a little bit more. So maybe we'll go ahead and hit the trash can and we'll delete that. As we look through here, we see we have a few different options here. We can create a choice. We can put in a text box. There's a rating field. We can put in a date. We can have a ranking. The Likert lets us have a grid to gauge attitudes around opinions and topics. We can even up, have uh, folks that are uploading files as long as we uh, limit the responders to folks who are inside our organization. So if we have internal folks and we're collecting information, we can use that to do that. The Net Promoter Score allows people to, you know, kind of put a zero to 10, uh, you know, rate, ranking on a zero to 10 scale. And a section allows you to break your form up into different pages. So if you wanted to basically, if you had a really long, like long series of questions and maybe you wanted to like, so maybe I wanna collect people's information here first and then I'm gonna break it into a section here. And in this next section, uh, we're just gonna ask a question. And we're gonna call this questions as our section. And now we're gonna add in some pieces. So maybe we'll put a, a choice box in here. And you can see it pops in a question with an options piece here. Uh, we can add in additional options, as many as we want. We can throw in an other option down at the bottom. If we want to allow people to have a free form text field there, uh, we can set the question as whether or not it's required or not, as well as whether or not we're going to allow multiple answers to be selected. This style of question also has the ability, if we look at the ellipsis down here, you can specify whether you want it to be the radio buttons or whether you want it to be a drop down menu, which will then just once we add another thing here and put in, say, maybe a rating, we'll now see this previous question is now shown with a drop down. And at any time you're building your forms out, you can start adding stuff. This is all saved in real time. So if we go back to our forms main page, just by up here in the upper part of the form, we'll see here I can that webinar poll form that we just created is right here. Drill back into it. We can see that this information that we put in has already been all saved. If we wanna see what this form will look like to participants, we can hit the preview button. This is also a way to sample some of your entries. And so now we can see this first name has got an asterisk and last name, these are required fields. So we'd have to put that on here. So if I'm just gonna put in, I'll just put in my name, David Bentz. And I work for Advisacon. And we're gonna skip the rest of this because they're not required fields. And so now we can see page two, we can select the answer. You know what, I'm gonna put in option five. That's what I liked. And this is a great quiz. So we're just gonna use that. Once I hit submit here, this actually does put in the response submission. We go back to our form here. We can see in our responses section, we're actually showing a response. And we can see the results that have shown up in here, as well as some of the analytics data that's all part of this. What's also nice within the preview section, you might've noticed that if you wanted to see maybe some of your folks are gonna be filling this out on a mobile device, what is this gonna look like on a mobile device? So now we can see, here's an example of how the form would look on a mobile phone, for example. So we can see really quickly that it's really easy to throw something like this together. And then once we want to publish this form, we have a couple of options here. Up here in the right corner of the screen, we can see there's this share button. And we have a couple of options for who we're going to collect this to. So the settings for this form are allowed to only people in my organization can respond. So only folks within AdvisorCon's domain would, ever, would actually be able to see and respond to this form. Or I can create this as an external form that I could publish to the web or send out in a mass email list and anybody with the link could respond. And now we see here's the link that'll take people directly to that form and I can just copy this. I can paste it into a mass email. There's a few other options here as well. We can create a QR code if we wanted to put something, you know, out in a little bit more of a modern format for folks to, you know, maybe on a printout or something. If you were embedding this onto some kind of a marketing campaign for posters, uh, we can also put this as an HTML iframe on a website if we want to put it in a web page or put it in a Sway file, or just simply save this as create an email that'll just forward this straight out from here. And now I can send this out to the list of whoever I want to.
as we mentioned before in that shared with me section, if there's other folks in my organization, if I wanted to work with them, I can also set this up to where I want to have other people within my team be able to work on this form as well. So I can send this link. And I want to limit it to folks in my organization. As soon as I copy it, now I can paste this link and I can send it to anybody in my team that I want to have also have access to this form. So we mentioned one of the other options there is kind of something that maybe we want to create a satisfaction survey. So I've pre-created one here called the class evaluation form. We can see I've used the theme to, you know, throw a theme background. It's a little busy, kind of fun, but, you know, we've got an office as folks are making a presentation. And now we can see within this form, we've got a number of questions, other pieces here. If we hit the preview, we can see what this form will look like. We select who we're doing here. Dave's doing a great job on this presentation, so we're going to go ahead and give him maximum scores. I would definitely recommend this course. And you can see I had a conditional option here, and I should probably go back and show you that real quick, but when I selected this answer, it exposed the rest of these questions. And now we can go ahead and give it an overall rating. If I wanted to have any other comments in here, I could put them in here. Now we hit Submit, and that's come, gone ahead and submitted it. Back in this form here, we can see, if I click on this question to edit it, we can see down here, there's an option for branching. And right now, branching, if we hit this branching page, based on the selection that people make, we can actually choose where they go in the navigation. And what I set this up as is to say, hey, if someone said they like this course, or they maybe had some reservations about it, they'll go ahead and say, you know, what they liked about the course. But if somebody says they didn't like about the course, I'm not gonna go ahead and ask them what the best thing about the course was. Um, so I'm gonna have them jump straight to the next question about, hey, what were some suggestions for improvements? Um, so you can do this a lot if you wanted to have some conditional responses to, you know, based on how somebody responds to the first question or a particular question in the course, in the survey, um, you can have different responses or different questions that are added up as a result of that. So that can be a nice way to be able to pull that together. One of the other fun features of the forms option is the quizzes. Um, this is something that's probably more useful for folks who are actually maybe, you know, if you're kind of throwing together some rudimentary uh, basic skills testing or, you know, maybe even in a classroom setting. But what's nice about the quizzes is they're similar to the surveys, but you actually get to specify what the correct answer is. So in this scenario, we've set up a question and with a couple of selections here, you know, the right answer and the wrong answer. And I've indicated that this right answer is, of course, the correct answer. Um, you can also have text-based answers where you um, set up the, the text here as what's accepted as the correct answer. So we can show an option here of maybe we put in another choice here and maybe options one, two, three, and four. And options one or four. And if we want to set this as multiple answers, we can then set multiple answers that need to be selected. And I'll set this at 15 points. Now you can see we've set this up in this regard. And if we hit the preview, I'll go ahead and select the right answer. And we'll just pick two of these three. As we can see, the one thing is, is this does not allow for partial answers. So the fact that I did not get all three of the correct answers meant that this answer was not counted as correct, but you can see it scored the other two as being correct answers. Let's take a look at the analytics next. We'll go back to our AdvisorCon class evaluation survey. We can see here that I've got a number of responses that have been submitted. And so we can see the list of, you know, kind of the breakout of the number of responses based on who the instructor was. And kind of this heat map here that's showing based on this, you know, poll of these various questions and, and kind of the ranking of how they were answered. 
pie chart breakout for the multi-select answer there. And then for any of the text-based responses, we can see how many have been responded and if the last response that had come through had had any text responses in it, that would be showing up in here. And then the overall Likert score. And you can see here that this is a net promoter score lets you see how many folks that ranked it were promoters, passive, or detractors. And any of these, you can see there's a more details link. If we pop open that, it brings us up to a screen that shows us all of the responses, what they ranked us the score as, and what that actually ranked them in. This is also true for any of the other options. If we want to see the overall responses, we can hit the view results page up in here. And now this lets us see the individual submissions for each entry. And we can toggle through and scroll through these and we see the different responses that have been entered at different times. Or if we want to do some more advanced analytics, we can open this in Excel. Now, this will take a moment. And now that we've opened up, we can see here's a table entry of all the different folks that have been done here. And so now we can do all kinds of things with this since we've got an Excel. We could create pivot tables, we could create reports, charts, we could have some pie charts and graphs, basically kind of recreating any of the other pieces. Or maybe if there was a different way we wanted to slice and dice and group the information, we could do that. Like maybe I want to look at, hey, I want to see and filter, you know, get all the responses just for David as an instructor or just for Maria. So this lets me drill into some of this data a little bit deeper than we would have just simply by what was showing in the first part. So how do we integrate this with some of the work that we're doing with our project teams? Well, if your team happens to be using Microsoft Teams, it's really easy to add forms to your team channel. Have an example here of a Teams channel that then has a number of these forms here. So you can see I've gone ahead and added the link for this form in the team itself. Now, because I'm also gonna be wanting to look at this here, I've also added the link that shows the results. So we can see the results analytics here in the Teams channel. And so anybody who comes into the team can actually see some of this information. It's really easy to add this in if you're looking to do so. In the Teams channel, we add a tab. And Forms is one of the tabs options that's right here at the very top. You can either create a form directly in Teams if you don't haven't already set that up, and this will automatically create the form as a shared form. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say Teams shared form. And this actually brought in the editor version to where basically now this is just a link for the actual forms page. Now say I want to add in another one of the forms that we created. Go back in and add another tab here, go back to forms. And we'll click add an existing form. Now this is going to give me a list of all the forms that I have access to currently. And so maybe we want to look at that webinar poll form that we created. And then you can see this drop down box here, I have an option to whether I wanna either collect responses or show the results. So that's kind of what we were showing before of, if I want my team to have access to be able to submit responses to this form here, then I can do that. And if I also wanna show the, the overall responses, then I can have, add a second tab that shows the results. But we're gonna go ahead and hit collect responses and save. And there we have it. We can see our form here, the webinar poll. 
and it won't let me go next because I haven't completed the required sections. So as you can see, it's basically just the same way. Um, if we go back to our web window, and we grab hold of that link here, we'll pretend that I received that link in an email and I clicked on it to see what will happen. And you can see it shows, it takes me straight to the form for me to be able to submit my answer. Now, one of the last pieces, it's a relatively new addition to the forms family, is what's called Forms Pro. Now, we have an option here, if you have Dynamics 365 in your tenant, or if your organization has purchased a subscription, you'll have options for this. And Forms Pro is kind of the upgraded version of Forms. As we'll toggle back over here, it's actually switching over to the Forms Pro environment. And what we can see at the at the outset, this looks fairly similar to the regular forms option. But what we get when we click into one of these is we get a bunch of additional options for the ability to customize the font, the text. We can actually set variables. Um, we can create basically um, fields that are going to be reused, that are going to correct, you know, collect data uh, to be able to use other things. We have the option to tie some of these forms into maybe a Dynamics entity to be able to pull information based on some of that, uh, whatever has been selected, and uh, be able to have more advanced analytics. Uh, we can connect Power BI into here and actually do some reports across surveys and responses. So that's kind of a you know a more advanced feature there. There's a few other options that are there. Uh, Forms Pro does come with as an as an add-in for Dynamics customers, and you get 2,000 submissions a month for free currently and then if you need to be able if you're doing more responses than that um, you have to pay uh, it, additional for it um, but forms the regular version of forms is included with every standard Microsoft Office 365 subscription well that kind of takes us through some of the basic pieces of Microsoft forms today we covered a little bit about how to create a standard survey how to create a quiz maybe a quick poll how to embed it in your Teams environment to be able to share with your team or to be able to even send out to an external group by creating a link or embedding it in a website or a QR code on a marketing campaign. Uh, forms is a really easy way to collect information and to be able to also have people create and give feedback in kind of a more anonymous form. We're always glad to have you with us. And so we thank you for watching today's presentation. And we would invite you to check out our website for more information. But thank you so much for joining, and we hope you have a great day.